Hello everyone, it is Blue Cart Error here, and today I will be doing two more weapons of the Blue Cart Weapon Closet series. The weapons today are the Ghost M4 and the P2Ks. Both of these weapons are considered to be an elite class of weaponry, primarily because of their either their high fire rate, their exceptionally low freeze rate, or just their overall performance in any of the well, soon to be listed categories. So, allow me to get started immediately on this. So, the first one I'll be beginning will be the Ghost M4. So, the weapon is in fact the Ghost M4. Its normal damage is 8, its maximum damage is 9, and the minimum damage is 6. The fire type can be either or. At default, it is left as a tap to fire. However, you can always change that by using its recent attachment. I think it's on. No, it's not. Okay. Okay. But it says fire mode switched. That means that your weapon has became automatic. So. You can clearly see that I am no longer tapping the fire button. I am in fact holding it down to go to shoot a stream of bullets. Really won't make too much of a difference, but is actually quite effective when it comes to basing. So, I disabled that. Its clip size is 17. Its bullets per shot is 1. And it has a good accuracy, believe it or not. You can see that, the, yes, in fact, that there is a spread on the bullet. However, it doesn't really a spread as weapons such as the M4. So, believe it or not, although this weapon does have an exceptional freeze rate, the accuracy could become a very problematic situation. Its freeze rate is exceptionally low, as you can clearly say. I managed to get to one point of the house, all the way to this other point of the house, with minimal freeze time. Its fire rate is pretty fast. I wouldn't quite say very fast, but yes, it is definitely fast. Admittedly, when it comes to situations where it's you and your enemy right in front of each other, to a point where it just becomes a complete spawn competition, uh, chances are you'll probably end up losing with this gun. But if you have the movement down, you should be actually be fine. It's reload speed, another thing that can become pretty problematic. I'll show you with how the reload looks in a bit. Did you see that? It's, I'm not gonna say fast actually, I'm gonna say it's moderate. Because believe it or not, the reload has screwed me over a lot. Which is why I highly discredit this gun for its accuracy and the reload speed. Those two those two features really bother me. And what bothers me even more the fact that this gun got nerfed right before I got it. That's a complete shame. And its price is 187,000 Grelats. And in just in case you didn't notice, 187 is the same exact number that's used for the 187 guns. So, I'm not sure if that's just a coincidence or a 187 gun. The Ghost M4 is the trademark gun for 187 guns. So, I would say this is far recommended because of its exceptional freeze rate. However, the reload can most certainly screw you over in any sparring situation, as well as basic. I would say yes to PK because the fire rate and its um, functionality to go to an automatic mode. I wouldn't quite say streaking. I think if you were to go streaking, you would choose a better gun. I mean, I doubt you would take a Ghost M4 to streak at the fastest potential possible. And for basing. Base is kind of a hard one. Because the automatic, it can be used for basing, but because of its high accuracy and such, it, it just doesn't seem worth it. Because of its reload speed as well, you can just find much better guns than this for basing. I mean, when it comes to basing with iFreeze, I'd say a lot of people use it. But me personally, I don't really think this is the most ideal gun for basing. If you want to base, I'd advise something like a Shipko or a Browning. At least a sniper rifle to go to boot. But something like a Ghost M4, you should probably leave that for sparring. I mean, look, the, the freeze rate is exceptional. The accuracy is a little bit too high, but 
inside of a sparring arena at high accuracy, it's actually going to count quite a bit because you don't really have all that much room, depending on what sparring you're in. If you're in, in your average generic sparring room, then you're not going to have a lot of room. So yeah, that's it. I would advise this gun for sparring and PK only. Streaking and basing? Don't get this gun for that. Get a Browning, get a Shipka, get a sniper rifle, get something that's actually a bit worth it. Alright, so, enough of the Ghost M4, and now moving on to the P2K. So, the P2K is a advanced piece of weaponry, which is actually a handgun. <laughs> This handgun is probably one of the strongest in the game. There are some pretty formidable handguns, but this is also another one that's quite formidable as well. In order to obtain this gun, you need 100,000 kills and it is located in the spar complex. So, the weapon is the P2K. Its normal damage is 8. Its maximum damage is 9. Its minimum damage is 6. It's fire type. It is a tap to fire, which means you'll have to tap your fire button to shoot. It has a clip size of 16, which is just about your average M16. I nearly said M16, my apologies. About your average M4. Its bullet per shot is 1. It has perfect accuracy with no spread at all. So just like the Ghost M4, with its high accuracy, hitting an enemy can become quite a problem with this gun, despite how fast you can fire. Its freeze rate is another gun that is exceptionally low, which is the reason why this gun is highly advised by numerous players. Same goes with the Ghost M4. Its reload speed is pretty fast. You can see if there was no reload delay time, I'd literally be ready to fire right, 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 wow, that was bad, right after I reloaded. See that? That's exceptionally fast. And the price is 100,000 Grelats. For myself, I would not advise this gun for sparring, believe it or not, because the accuracy is just a tad bit too high. And really, again, this just this gun just doesn't seem like the type of gun you would really use for a spot. You can use it, yeah, sure, go knock yourself out. But would I really advise it? Or would an average spar would really exactly advise it? No, they would probably advise something with a little bit more of a spread to the bullet. PKing? Eh, not really. If you're going to PK with this gun, get another P2K. That's a lot more ideal. Struking? No. Same explanation for the PK. If you buy two of these, they will become a lot more better with it. For uh, that category. And finally, basing. Yes. Because you would not believe how many times I've switched to one pistol and how much useful it became. If you're trying to hit an enemy, a lot of times having dual wield just doesn't really work out too well. But if you take the time to switch to one, you can kind of pin your enemy just like that. And if this stupid light wasn't in the way, well then, you would uh, get my point a little bit more clear than that. So, moving on. This time, I will show you guys what it's like to have dual P2Ks. So, weapon is the dual P2Ks. Its normal damage, maximum damage, and minimum damage is constant meaning they do not change. Its fire type is still a tap to fire. However, it's significantly faster than only having one handgun. Its clip size is doubled, which means 32. Now, unlike other guns such as the Shipka, which also shoots two bullets, you may have noticed that the clip size of the Shipka is 40. However, you still shoot two bullets at one time, which technically means you only have a clip size of 20, because you only get to shoot 20 times before you need to reload. P2K is completely different. Considering the fact that with the P2Ks you have an alternating fire, this would mean that you are literally shooting 32 times before you have to reload. And that is very good for a clip size. Um, 
I believe the highest gun with the clip size just might end up being the minigun. The clip size of 50. Uh, right next to that, it might actually be the AV-8 with the clip size of 40. And then maybe the stand and the P2, dual P2Ks will take its right, rightful stand in third place, along with probably some other guns that I probably missed. Its bullets per shot is 1 because it ultimates. Its accuracy is perfect. There is no change to that as well. It remains constant. Its freeze rate, it does seem to be a little bit more freeze. But not all that bad to a point where having dual, two P dual P2Ks can become detrimental because they do not. Its fire rate is very fast. This gun is significantly faster than having only one uh, P2K. And it's probably faster than most other guns as well. Uh, it's reload speed, let's check this out. Wow, that is another gun that has <laughs> a very fast reload speed. Again, if there was no delay time, I would have been ready to fire right after I reloaded. So yeah, this gun, if there was no reload time, this gun's reload probably would have gotten nerfed, because that is just ridiculous. <laughs> Look, he didn't even go to the entire reload frame. I mean, I'll admit, the reload frame for the P2Ks is pretty cool. Check this out. <laughs> he kind of like throws up his pistols, and like, I, I guess he like throws in the clips from the bottom or something. Yeah, it, it looks pretty cool. But nobody really cares about how the hell the gun reloads. So, in final, the pricing of this gun is 200,000. Considering the fact that you only need to buy two P2Ks. So, it is at a similar pricing to the Browning Automatic Rifle and the Minigun. However, well, how does this gun work in comparison to the Browning Automatic Rifle or the Vulcan Minigun? Well, if you wish to compare it, the Minigun is significantly faster than all guns. That being the P2K and the Browning. However, the minigun does not have a. Uh, how should I say this? The damage output, which is inflicted by the Vulcan minigun, is not really that good. I mean, sure, the fire is fast, so it will make up for the damage. But still, the minigun just seems like a gun that's just really easy to dodge. I mean, honestly, when you look at when most players use it, they just spam it. And that makes your movement very predictable. You're hardly getting any hits off because. The accuracy is really not that wide either. I mean, it has spread on the bullet, but it's just not wide enough to a point where you actually manage to hit someone if they're like very deep below you. So, the Burning Weather Rifle will probably have the highest uh, damage output in comparison to the three with a damage of 10. However, the one thing that the Burning Weather Rifle will not beat from the P2K will definitely be its fire rate. I mean, the P2K is, is, you can clearly see it's a lot faster than the Burning Mag Rifle. However, it's not, of course, it isn't nearly as fast as the Vulcan Minigun. In terms of fire, Vulcan Minigun is first, then probably followed by the P2Ks, and then to Burning to finish off. But, all in all, uh, if you have 200,000 Greylats, and you just coincidentally got 100,000 kills, I would actually advise the Burning first. You see, the reason why I would actually advise the burning first is because of the fact that if you really want a gun that is good in most circumstances, you would want to get a burning because you can spar with a burning, you can PK with a burning, you can streak with a burning, you can base with a burning, you can do anything with a burning. Believe it or not, the burning automatic rifle is a very versatile weapon. Believe it or not, I know I said that for the M4. But believe it or not, when you really do think about it, the Burning Garden Rifle just might meet the M4 in those capabilities. <clears throat> the P2K's dual, you could probably use it for spa, although I would recommend it. PKing, yes. Streaking, yes, of course. The fire rate and damage output from the P2K's is very good. And basing? Oh, of course. This gun is an amazingly good defensive weapon. You wouldn't believe how many times I managed to just mow down enemies by just standing at one point of GZ firing like this. I've managed to get blue PK awards all the time just from doing this at GZ. 
And I do this all day. I don't do anything else. Basically like an anti-social turret. So yeah, th that is ridiculous. If you want to really, really grasp the concept of a good defensive weapon, then you should either go for the Shipka or the P2Ks. If it's your first time, go for the Shipka, because that's a pretty good gun to have. Especially if you're a baser. But if you're not a baser, uh, you know. Although I'm kind of digressing a little bit, because now I'm talking about Shipkas and Brownings and <laughs> Miniguns. You know what I'm trying to make here. <coughs> so, yes indeed. That was the Ghost M4, and that was the statistics of the P2Ks, dual and single. Sorry about that, I was drinking water. So, for next episode, I will attempt to get the PSG-1. Now, I'll give you a short description of the PSG-1. The PSG-1 is a sniper rifle, which can only be obtained by getting 150,000 kills. It costs 80,000 grelats, <clears throat> and has the potential to shoot over most walls, making it a very formidable form of a sniper rifle. Probably one of the best. Concerning its freeze rate, the fire rate, and its damage output, I'll have to test out the damage. I have no idea what's the damage off for the PSG-1. If you know what the damage is, please comment below. I would like to know. I think it is 13? Or... I, I think it's 13. I have high expectations for it being 13, but I'm not 100% sure. So I will try to get the... Uh, the PSG-1, and maybe I'll get the Spectre. In case you didn't know what the Spectre was, the Spectre is another submachine gun which can be located in the top floor of the 187 guns. I believe it costs 1100,000. I could be wrong about that one. But yes, it is pretty expensive, but uh, I, ne I need something. For Blue Cat's Weapon Closet, you can clearly see that for the most part, it was always two guns. It was never just one gun. And then end off the episode. I always had a second gun to do as well. So, as always, thank you guys for watching. And I'll catch you guys later.